allow me to bring the word of God this day. I'm so glad. The Lord has dropped a message in my life and that is what I want to share. I am sharing in this service what I have titled the head of John the Baptist. I am sharing what I have titled the head of John the Baptist. This message, I get it from the context of what the Bible says in Mark chapter number 6. I want us to pick up from verse number 17. Mark chapter number 6, I thank God. The IT people have given us new King James Version. The Bible says, for Herod himself had sent, had sent and laid hold of John the Baptist. This means that he had sent police to arrest John the Baptist, put him in prison, and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. The reason why John is arrested by Herod and Tippas, Herod is a title. And therefore, for us to understand the Herod we are talking about, this is Herod and Tippas. He has no problem with John the Baptist. But the trouble is with Herodias, who was annoyed and angry with John because of what John had said in relation to their marriage. And therefore, to please the wife, to please Herodias, The Bible says, for Herod himself sent and laid hold of John. Praise God. So that the angry Herodias can be a pissed a bit. I'm annoyed and my husband is not doing nothing. You know how we want a re re revenge? Praise God. I'm annoyed this guy is doing this unto me and my, my wife is mom. You want to say something? Don't quarrel for your husband. Don't fight for your wife. Verse number 18, the Bible says, Because John had said it to Herod and Tippas, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. John the Baptist realizes what John, uh, Herod and Tippas has done. And Herod and Tippas has taken Philip, his uh, brother's wife, and John comes and stands up and says, no, this will not happen at my watch. I must rebuke it. It doesn't matter who you are. Yes, I know you are Herod. You are the king of this government. But I'm the prophet. This is wrong. Don't take your wife's brother, your, your brother's wife. Do not do that. That is so wrong. And when John spoke as a prophet, John speaks as a man of God. The wife got angry. How do you dare talk about my relationship? How do you dare talk about my marriage? Who do you think you are? Herodias gets annoyed. He's angry. But she cannot do nothing. Listen to this. Verse number 19. The Bible says, Therefore, Herodias held, held it against him. Herodias held it against John. Him here is John. And wanted to kill him. But she could not. She was annoyed. She planned on how John can be killed. She planned on how John can be eliminated. But she had no powers to kill John. Verse number 20. The Bible says, For Herod feared knowing that he was a just, 
He was just and holy man. Praise God. The reason why the king Herod Antipas could not be able to kill John to make Herodias happy, it is because the Bible says he feared John. He is a man of God. He is a prophet. He is called of God. He is a servant. Do not touch the anointed one of God. Praise God. Listen to this. Knowing that he was a just, he was a just and holy man. Praise God. Do we know whether you are just? Do we know whether you are faithful? Do we know whether you are righteous? We ought to be righteous, the righteous ones of God. We must walk in purity. We must walk in righteousness. We must walk in holiness. That will be able to give us a mark. Praise God. The king understood. The king understood that John, knowing that he was a just, he was just an holy man, and he protected him. Praise God. Uh, the king protected because the Herodias, his wife, uh, the wife wanted to kill John killed, eliminated, removed. Why? How can you correct me for whom I must marry? How can you correct me on whom I must relate with? Listen to this. The Bible says he protected him. And when he had him, he did many things and had him gladly. Verse number 21. What does the Bible say? The Bible says in verse number 21. Then an opportune, an opportune day came when Herod, on his birthday, gave, he threw in a feast for his nobles, the high officers, and the chief men of Galilee. Praise God. An opportunity comes, and King Herod Antipas is celebrating a birthday. The Bible does not tell us. How old he was, how many years he was celebrating. But at least we know he was celebrating a birthday. And therefore, he calls important people in his jurisdiction. He calls the, the cabinet. He call, the Bible says that he called his nobles, men and women, who are serving together with him. He called high officers, high-ranking officers, both in the both in the, both in the, in prison, in KDF, and in police. Praise God. The high-ranking officers were invited to the bash. Listen to this. And the chief men of Galilee. Praise God. This was a bash of the VIPs. This was a bus of the dignitaries. This was a bus of very important men and women in Galilee. Listen to this. An opportune time has come. And uh, uh, it is like Herodias was just planning to do something. Listen to this. Verse number 21. What does the Bible say? And when Herodias' daughter herself came in and danced, what did this girl do? She came and danced. Her name is called Salome. The Bible does not deal, but if you are a theologian, if you are a historian, if you are a researcher, and you would like to be able to want to understand the background of this, you can find it. Listen to this. And he pleased the Herod and those who sat with him. The king said it to her, ask me whatever you want, and I will give it to you. Praise God. This girl, Salome, comes and dances. And when she has danced, the king is excited. The visitors are happy. And listen to this reckless, careless king. Who is who am I can be able to say? He's a stupid man. He recklessly makes a statement that he cannot be able to fulfill. Or even if he will fulfill, it hurts others. As a king, as a leader, if you are in position, don't be reckless. Don't do things that will leave other people hurt. Don't do things that will leave other people in pain. Don't do things that will leave other people crying. Herod and Tippers. Said, and when Herodias' daughter herself came in and danced, just at a dance, this, this king must have been a king of Tim Mafisi. 
Do you know the king who is in Tim Mafisi? She just sees the girl dance, and the girl is dancing, and she sees the girl shaking waist. This is her daughter. And listen what he does. The Bible says that the daughter herself came in and danced and pleased the Herod and those who sat with him. The king said to the girl, ask me whatever you want. Praise God. It was not the responsibility of Salome, the girl, to ask what she wanted. No, it was the responsibility of King Antipa, Herod Antipas, to know how can I honor my daughter, to know how can I honor this girl. You don't say, ask me anything. Praise God. Why? Because what this girl would have asked, maybe you will deliver, or maybe you can't deliver, as the story comes. And therefore, in the recklessness of the king, in the carelessness of the king, in the heart of the king, he says, ask me anything. This is a blank check that Salome, the daughter of Herodias, gets from the father. A blank check. What do you do when you are given a blank check? Praise God. When you are given a blank check, if you are like me, I will not put in 10 million shillings. No, 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 no. Because the king said, write in anything that you want. I will grant it to you. I will write in some trillions. Praise God. I said I will put in some trillions. I will remove my head from thinking in terms of thousands. I will remove my head from thinking in terms of their millions. I will remove my head from thinking in terms of billions. I will think in terms of trillions. Not in Kenya shillings. I will do the trillions in another currency. Because if it's trillions in Kenya shillings, then you know the amount. But if it's trillions in dollars, it is trillions in euros, it is trillions in dirhams, it is trillions in South African rands, it is trillions in, in Indian rupees. I, I know you understand what I'm talking about. It is trillions in euros. Are you understand what I'm saying? Let us be able to open our eyes, open our mind, that we must be able to know currencies. And which currencies are high on the market, uh, on the market platform? So the girl has danced, the, the king is excited, and the visitors, the dignitaries, the nobles are happy. What do you do? You don't become reckless and say what King Herod and Antipas did. Listen to this. The Bible says in verse number 23, he also swore, he has made a reckless statement, and he's swearing. And you know, a vow must be honest. A vow must be paid. A promise is a debt. If you are a Christian and you have said, God, give me a job. When you give me a job, I will be faithful. I will be a tighter every month. Please fulfill the vow. Fulfill the vow. What you promise becomes a debt. Praise God. I said, praise the Lord. This man goes ahead. He has said whatever you are. He swears and he says, whatever you ask me, I will, give you, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. Praise God. I will give you up to half of my kingdom. Ask you for anything. Just because of a dance. Praise God. Just because you are the king. You are the manager. You are pleased with your worker. Know in your heart, if I were the king, uh, Herod and Tippas, I would have said, after this function, young girl, I'm so impressed with you. Let me take two with you, and I will do something for you. So that what I'm doing for Salome, the one who has danced very well, is not in the jurisdiction of Salome. It is with me the king. It is with me the manager. It is with me the general manager. It is with me the director. But a king who was reckless, this is what he said. He swears. He also swore to her and said, whatsoever you ask me, I will give it to you. Up to half of my kingdom. Praise God. How many of us as members of this church have sat down and promised your children and you have never delivered what you promised your children? You are a careless parent. 
You promised this child that next year I will take you to boarding. Next year came, you did not take your, your child to boarding. You are not a responsible father. Praise God. What you promised to a child, fight and work hard and fulfill the promises that you have made. If you promise something to your wife, praise God. Don't wait for your wife to be able to ask you and keep reminding you. When you think she has impressed you so much, praise God, don't stop using the brain and start using the buttocks. Praise God. There are people who just, this one stopped using the brain. And you know what he used. The Bible says, verse number 24, this is what the Bible says. So he went, so she went out and said it to her mother. This is a brilliant girl. As young as she is, she has been given a blank check. As young as she is, maybe she's a standard age. Maybe she's a form four. She has no, she doesn't have an idea. What do I do? And runs to the mother and tells the mother, Mommy, I have a blank check from the king. Praise God. Praise God. She is a, a girl who has learned to do consultation. She has gone to consult. I have been told, even up to, the half, up to the half of the kingdom of Herod, he will give me. I just danced and everybody was so, so impressed. Praise God. And the girl, the young girl that is brilliant, she knows that maybe she can, her guess will not be very good. And she goes to consult the mother. Listen to this. Listen to this. So she went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask? What can I ask from the king? This is what the king has said. Ask for anything. Praise God. Ask for anything. Even if it is the half of my kingdom, I will grant it to you. And she is so wise, she goes to her mother, who understands these things, and asks the mother, what can I ask, mommy? What can I ask from the king? I have just met Uhuru, and Uhuru is asking me, ask for anything, even if it's half of my kingdom, I will give it to you. Mommy, please sort me here. I want to go quickly. That is a bright girl. That is a wise girl. Wiser than the mother, wiser than the father. This is what I came to share. Verse number 25. The Bible says, immediately, listen to this, immediately she came with the haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist. That is where I got my title. The head of John the Baptist. The Baptist. Did we do verse number 24? Go to verse number 24. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. Her mother is asking her, uh, Salome to go to the president of the country to ask for the head. What did you do with the head? What will... What will you do with the head? If you are here and you are a kikuyu, you have slaughtered. You don't ask for the head. The meat is not in the head. The meat that you will find in the head, nile, the meat that you just keep searching, the head, the bigger part of the head is bones. It is the skull. What will you do with the head? Praise God. This woman tells her daughter to go and ask for the head. Why couldn't she be able to tell the daughter to ask for the, for the body? She said, the head of John the Baptist. And that's what I, went, I wanted to come to discuss. Listen to me. If you are a luo, you know that the, the fish, the flesh is not in the head. The head is full of bones. If you are here and you are a mkamba, you love the head of a goat, you love the head of a sheep, please, there is nothing in the head. Slaughter and don't run for the head. 
Praise God. I said, praise the law. There is no meat in the head. There is no stew in the head. There is nothing in the head. But this woman tells the daughter, go to the king and ask for the girl head of John the Baptist. It is only witches. It is only witches, magicians, and murderers who ask for the head of others. Praise God. Even if you don't do, you disagree with me and you want me down, please don't go to a witch doctor and say, I want the head of the pastor of Imara Daima. What will you do with my head? Yes, my head has been brought to you. What will you do with my head? Some of us go to, uh, they, go, they go, they are employed, they have been working together in the same company. One of them is promoted, and then the other goes to the magician and tells the witch doctor, please, I wonder her demoted, I wonder her sacked. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I say that you are in business with, uh, and you have business co uh, competitors. Competition is good anywhere. Praise God. And because we are in competition, you are going to a magician and you are saying, you are going to a witch doctor and you are saying, I want my, all the customers to come. Even if we gave you business the whole country, what will you do with our business? You are the only one selling Coca-Cola. Praise God. What will you do with that kind of market? Learn to appreciate competition. Learn to appreciate your competitors. They give you um, a platform to be able to sell from a point of what you have a notch higher. The Bible says she went out hastily. She went to go to verse number 20. Immediately she came in with haste to the king and asked him, saying, I want you to give me the, at once the head of John the Baptist. At once means immediately, urgently. I want it like now. Give me the head of John the Baptist. Why do you ask for the head of the prophet? Why are you asking for the head of the servant of God? Why are you asking for the head of your neighbor? Just because you are told, Alisonge Shampaka, and therefore you want the head of your neighbor because Alisonge Shampaka. Why do you want the head? Why do you want him dead? Just because the, uh, this young man has been tuning you and you have friends and he has changed his mind, he is now tuning your friend. Why do you want the head of your friend? Praise God. The girls are still there. The world is still full of girls. The world is still full of men. Praise God. Don't you want to go to a magician and say, this girl has taken my boyfriend. I want him dead. Praise God. You don't have to wish your enemy death. That is what I came to say. Anger, rage, bitterness, unforgiveness will push you to sin. My dear brothers and sisters, I am here to help us understand. The Bible says, love your enemy. Praise God. Herodias called God John as an enemy just because he was a prophet who was courageous, who could talk about sin in the church. I said in the first service how I had to rebuke some lady in this church and a young man, this lady, let me give you the story. In their ministering in the praise and worship, they minister together in the praise and worship. And this girl uh, somehow loses her job and decides to go seek for help. And he seeks for help in a boy's house. Please house me. Please house me. Me, I will be sleeping facing left and you sleeping facing right. Praise God. She thought... She's made of asbestos. She may thought that the chemistry will not work. The chemistry worked. The heat came. They slept. She got pregnant. Ladies and gentlemen, praise God. If you're listening to me and you are a lady, you are in charge of sex in your life. Anytime you fall sexually, your problem is not the man. How did you be go to the house first? How did you remove the clothes first? You are in rest. You, are you understand what I'm saying? 
and you did the thing. And once it all, of all, you know you are safe days and you are unsafe days. You don't have to have been a university graduate for you to understand safe days and unsafe days. Praise God. This is what I'm saying. Immediately she ran and she went to Herod and uh, Antipas and he asked them, immediately, I want John the Baptist. Praise God. A church leader must correct any problem in the church. Even if you are the greatest titan and you have made sin, I will rebuke you. Whether you live, live, live like yesterday. You cannot come and tell me that because of my tight, I will not be able to rebuke you, correct you. Ladies and gentlemen, a son is correctable. A good Christian is sendable. When your prophet speaks, listen to your prophet. Whether it's painful or not, sit in there. Praise God. Why? Because you will be able to inherit the kingdom of God. If you don't, then you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That is what I came to say. This man, the pastor, John the Baptist, was a courageous man. He confronted the king. It is wrong for you to take the wife of your brother. Take me even if you have to kill me, kill me. It is wrong to take the wife of your brother. That is what John the Baptist said. Go to verse number 26. What does the Bible say? And the king was exceedingly sorry. He was exceedingly sorry. Why? On his reckless statement. Oh, I'll give you everything, including half of my kingdom. That was so careless. That was so reckless. That was so irresponsible. The king was exceedingly sorry, yet because of the oath and because of those who sat with him, he did not want to refuse her. Praise God. This is what the young people in this country are calling. He was in a catch-22. Praise God. Where was he? He was in a catch-22. How can I come out? My dignitaries will know I'm not a man of authority. If I was King Agrippa the king, I will not have given her the head. Because you don't honor with a wrong. Did you hear what I said? Because it was a wrong thing for the girl to have been sent by the mother for the king of the prophet. So it was in the uh, domain, in the docket of the king to say, that is a wrong one. I will not ask for something else. Praise God. Because two wrongs cannot make a right. I came to share with us, and the king was exceedingly sorry for his statement. He asked, how did I in the first place commit myself to this? People who promise you heaven, but they can't give you hell. Promise what you can deliver. Praise God. Pray, promise what you can give. The Bible says he was exceedingly sorry, yet because of the oath, praise God, because of the oath, he has to deliver the head. Whether it has meat or no meat, he had to deliver the head. Whether it was killing somebody or not, he had to deliver the head. Why? Because it was under oath. You have vowed that when you get this boom, you will be able to give 100,000 shillings to the church. When you go to the boom, the, need, the needs become higher than the boom. My dear brothers, sisters, and, uh, and uh, sons in the house, listen to this. Did I say it? I want to repeat it again. Be correctable. Be rebukable. Be sendable. Be somebody who can be called and you are told, this is wrong, and you say, I'm sorry, sir. Some of us do not have the statement sorry in our lives. You can't say sorry to your husband. You can't say sorry to your children. You can't say sorry to your wife. That is the magic word. Sorry, thank you, excuse me. Those are some, uh, uh, statements that must come out of an intelligent person. Praise God. And you're saying, who do you think I am? I will not be able to say sorry. The Bible says that you must be a forgiver. 
So don't call for the blood of your enemy. That akitoka kikros barabara kanyagwe. Just because you disagreed. Why do you want them dead? Why do you want... Some of us in our marriages, this is what we say, that my husband is one of my team mafisis. Aki onato mstana analianga. Anaenda kwa mchawi, unambia mchawi. Sitake yaone mstana yoyote. Sitake yaone mwana mke mwoyoyote. Mchawi anafanya concussion, anakupatia mume wako anakuwa blind. Hata wewe hata kuona tena. Praise God. Then you went to a witch doctor to make this man not see another man. And now, even you, even you, the man does not see you. Or if he has eyes to see you, that the concussion made this man, now the one who was the managing director, and this is a living example. I have seen it. This man was employed with poster and telecommunication, and the wife does some things, and the man who was going to work, this man, from when the concussion came, this man uh, hides in the bedroom. When people come in, he goes to hide in the bedroom. He doesn't want to see anybody. He stopped going to work. The girl, the lady is saying, why don't you want to go to the... When he sees any visitor, whether a relative or a visitor, he hides. Why? Because the magician messed up this man. Praise God. Praise God. Cast your cares and burdens to the Lord. Don't take your problems to the witch doctor. There are other witch doctors who will give you a concussion and you want to, anakwambia, peleka hii uweke kwa ile mtungi ya maji. Listen to this. Your children, you're messing up the whole family because you put something in the, in the, in the mutungi where you drink from, in the dispenser. Praise God. And your children, you wanted your husband uh, the messed. Now your children are messed. Now your uh, house girl is messed. Now everybody who took from that mutungi is messed up. Why? You consulted in the wrong place. This girl went to consult in the wrong place. Praise God. I said praise the Lord. Salome went to a wrong woman to consult. I have a blank check. What do I fill in? Listen, she had an example, multiple choices. What were the multiple choice? This girl was told, ask for anything. That is one multiple choice. Anything. Number two, multiple choice that was powerful is even half of my kingdom. Ask for it, I'll give you. If I were this woman and I wanted good for my daughter, I would have said, did the king say that? I want you to be a princess. I want you to be a queen. Now ask for half. So that Herod Antipas is half the nation and Salome is half the nation. Are you understanding? That is why I'm asking, what will you do with the head? Praise God. You are asking for the head of your neighbor. You are asking for the head of your, your brother. You are asking for the head of your workmate. You are asking for the head of the people closer to you. What will you do with the head? You go to verse number 27. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in prison. So he has beheaded John, the man of God. John, the prophet, his head is off his, head, his body. So what? Praise God. Did that bring a difference? Did that bring an impact in uh, Herodias' life? Did that bring an impact in Salome's life? Praise God. When you go before King Pres President Uhuru, please, I was saying, you shut up your mouth. Don't go before the king and you're asking for handouts. The king will give you bigger and better. But you're saying, you know, I just um, 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 you're in the, the house on the hill, on the White House, and you're asking, oh, transport, uh, transport, uh, 1,000 bob. My goodness, how do you ask a king 1,000 bob? The king can be able to tell you, go, I have given you 100 acres in Kajiado. The king will tell you, go, and uh, you will be the managing director of Kevevapi. The king will be saying, go, and I have made you the director of water company. Are you understand what I'm saying? What do you do when you go before the king? You pray that God will give you wisdom. Praise God. You pray that God will give you wisdom on what to say appropriately. You don't go before the king and you are the one who takes the show of talking. 
go before the king and shut up. And praying. And when you're shutting up, you're praying. God, impress on him on something that will change my life. Impress on him on something that will transform my community. Impress on him, oh Lord. Are you understanding? Pray that God will impress on the king on what he can do in your life on his own volition. Praise God. Listen to this. You don't ask for handouts from a manager. You don't ask for handouts from your director. Don't ask for handouts. My goodness. You are asking for money from your pastor. My goodness. The pastor can pray for you for heaven to pour. And you ask him for 1,000 shillings from your pastor. My goodness. When you go before your king, your managing director, don't go borrowing, don't go begging. You, your handout will not be able to will change your life. My dear brother, this woman, the reason why Herodias asked for the head of John the Baptist, it is because she could not manage her anger. She could not handle her bitterness. She could not, she didn't have forgiveness. She could not be able to understand, to handle and manage her rage. Give me Joel, James chapter number 1, verse number 19 to 22. James chapter number 1, 19 to 22. Let's just enjoy the scriptures. The Bible says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. The reason why you are given two years is to hear two times. And when you speak, speak less than what you hear. Let every man, let every woman be slow to speak, but hear widely. Hear twice. These are not side mirrors. Praise God. The Bible, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Yes, you have a reason. Your only boyfriend has been taken away from you. Be slow to wrath. Be slow to anger. Praise God. If there was anybody who would have been angry here, it was not supposed to be Herodias. It was supposed to be Philip, whose wife was taken. Praise God. Just imagine, Philip, the Bible does not tell us he was so angry. The Bible does not tell us that he wanted the head of Herod and Tippas. But it is his wife who was taken. Are you understand what I'm saying? Go to verse number 20. What does the Bible say? For the wrath of man does not produce righteousness of God. The wrath of man, anger, will not be able to produce righteousness. Anger will only be able to lead you to sin. People are angry and they are saying, I will pay robbers so that they can be able to kill him. People are angry and they are saying, if I meet you and I'm driving, I will be able to run over your life. People are angry and they can't manage their anger. And they are saying, if I got uh, poison, I will do uh, put poison in his water. Praise God. There are pastors who do not even eat in their church. Why? Because they think that their members are against them. Praise God. And they have refused. This lady A has offered to be bringing tea for the pastor and mandasi for the pastor and sauces for the pastor. But a bad thinking comes and says, please don't tell. Why do you think she's bringing? She wants to take your life. Me, I will drink and eat. Praise God. Why? Because I know Mark chapter number 16. Even if we will take poisonous things, they will not harm us. Praise God. An anointing over us. There are so many things that have been put in to kill you, but you are still alive. There are so many words that were spoken to your life. You will go. You will not reach Nairobi, but you reached Nairobi. Can we give a clap and a shout unto the Lord? Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a celebration. You are alive by the grace of God. You are alive not at the whim of people. You are alive by the grace of God. My dear, my dear brothers and sisters, let's go to verse number 21 and 22. Therefore, the Bible, James says this, therefore, lay aside all fil uh, filthiness and all overflow of wickedness. 
This woman, Herodias, was overflowing with wickedness. And because she was overflowing with wickedness, she asked for the head that has no meat. She asked for the head that is full of nothing. She, she had no purpose. I wish she told the, the daughter, ask for resources, ask for land, ask for property, ask for all this, and, and it will be able to benefit you. And receive with meekness. Listen to this. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word. Receive with humility the word that has been spoken to you. Praise God. There are people you rebuke in the church and they run away from the church. Those are people who are not correctable. Those are people who are not sendable. Those are people who are not sons. They are illegit. Listen to this. Which is able to save your soul. The word implanted in your life can save your soul. Please, don't hate. Don't be a hater. You know, there are people who are called haters. And especially on social media. The haters, you do something good, and the haters will always be able to send in something. They are throwing in. Those are haters. Praise God. I said in the living church, Imara Daima, girls will not be haters. Young people will not be haters. Mothers will not be haters. Fathers will not be haters. You owe me love. I owe you love. 22, finish gems for me. The Bible says what? Listen. But, the Bible says, but be doers of the word. And not hear us only. Hear the word. When you are told be a tighter in the house of God, you remain a tighter. When you are told be an offerer, you offer in the house of God. That God may offer in your life. That God may offer in your family. That God may bring a transformation that you have never had. But you have eaten your 90% and you are still following 10% 10, 10 that belongs to God. It will not take you anywhere. You are like this woman who is looking for the head. When you have, the 90% is yours. You are still looking for the head. Praise God. Take me to Psalms chapter number 37, verse number 7 and 8. Ladies and gentlemen, I came to speak to us. Don't ask for the head. Praise God. Be a responsible man. Be a responsible woman. Be a responsible person. Do not ask for the head. The head will not be able to impact your life. Ask for things that will leave you impacted. Ask for things that will leave you promoted. Ask for things that will leave you changed. Praise God. Praise God. Ni wachawi peke yake wanauliza damu ya watu. Ni wachawi peke yake wanauliza kuwa watu. The Bible says in verse number 7, Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. My dear sister, I came to say, Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for God. He shall surely come to promote you. He shall surely come to deliver you. He shall surely come and give you a job. Wait patiently for the Lord. He does not come late. He doesn't come early. He right comes right on time. Please, somebody put your hands together and give a shout and a clap unto the Lord. Give a celebration unto the Father. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Many of us are fretting because I was in school together. Who do you think she is? She is getting uh, more money. She's prospering faster than me. I want her life. I want her head. I want her this. Please, don't fret when somebody seems to prosper. But you are the next. I love what our bishop says. When you see a neighbor of yours buying a chopper, Praise God. And you are the neighbor. Please, don't fret. Don't be envious. Don't be angry. What you can only be able to do is do an offering in their life. I am fueling your chopper. Uh, one day I will also be able to own my chopper. Praise God. You hear a friend, your neighbor has bought a car. Iyo inakufa, but he has sleepless nights. 
Why are you going sleepless nights? Just because your neighbor has bought a car. If you are a good person, please tell him, congratulations, this is a good car. I covet it. I am giving you an offering for fuel. I will pray that God will give me my own car. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The Bible says, because of the man who brings wickedness schemes to pass, there are people who are out to bring wicked schemes. Praise God. They are men who are out to bring wicked schemes. They are men who are out to make others cry. They are men who are able, who are meant to punish other people. And you're punishing them for nothing. What had John done? Just rebuking him. You know, I will read for you something and you'll be amazed. Let me not go there. Go to, take me to uh, so Proverbs 16.32. Take me to Proverbs 16.32. Church, can we read all of us? How he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Why are you angry? Why are you getting angry quickly? Forgive. Praise God. Yes, you are offended, but I'm teaching us. Forgive. Learn to forgive. Don't anger. He who is slow to anger is better than a mighty one. A mighty one is the rich one. A mighty one is the strong one. A mighty one is the one who is above. The one that is slow to anger. My dear sister, be slow to anger. Praise God. Be slow to anger. I said be slow to anger. The Bible says, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Praise God. The, he who rules this. Herodias as a woman could not rule her heart. She could not rule her spirit. And the Bible says, he who rules his spirit can, the, and he who rules his spirit then, than he who takes a city. Praise God. She could not rule her spirit. And that's why she was angry. She's uh, believing and she's coveting and she's saying, oh my, the, the head of John the Baptist. What do you do with the head? That is what I'm asking. What do you do with the body, dead body? It can only go to the morgue. What do you do with it? Please, forgive your brother. Forgive your neighbor. Forgive your offender. I'm teaching us, be a man who is slow to anger. Don't I be angry over nothing. Praise God. Amen. Let me give you a story. This man in our village had just bought meat, and the meat was quarter meat. Quarter kg of meat. Quarter kg of meat. And uh, he uh, wants to prepare ugali. And therefore he has, uh, and he doesn't have money, he doesn't have even stuff, he doesn't have even gas. And therefore he's using charcoal. And he puts meat on the charcoal and it has dried up. And then he closes the door, forgetting that the cat cannot come, to, does not have to come through the, uh, the door. It can jump up. Praise God. And therefore, he has gone to the world to prepare himself the nyanyas and the mbogas. And he comes back and uh, there's, no, there's no meat on the jiko. And he hears the cat. We know when the cat, when the cat is eating, he's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this guy gets the cut. And he gets the cut. Cuck, and gets the cut by the neck. And opens the jiko. And pulls the cut in the jiko. Closes the door in the jiko. And the cut jumps up. And the fire is burning.